our absolute right to free speech, the ability to publicly share ideas, a right that is absolutely protected by the First Amendment, is civil society's immune system. It's not just ideal, it's necessary to ensure a healthy society. We are more secure, safer, and stronger when any idea or philosophy, however repugnant, is exposed to sunlight and debate. Last August, in Charlottesville, Virginia, a group of self-described white nationalists went marching through the streets, waving torches and shouting slogans associated with Nazis. Protesters predictably appeared, and one of those protesters was murdered when a man sympathetic with the white nationalists drove his car into their crowd. Hate speech killed that woman, people said, ironically excusing the murderer himself. And my Facebook feed was suddenly filled with my friends on the left, demanding that we water down the First Amendment by outlawing hate speech. There was one meme in particular that caught my attention, and it went something like this. Nazism is illegal in Germany. Flying Nazi flags and giving Nazi greetings is illegal in Germany. So why isn't the KKK unconstitutional here? Why aren't white hoods and white supremacist propaganda illegal in America? Why? Because Germany is ashamed of its bigotry and America is proud of it. Now this, ladies and gentlemen, is ridiculous. Germany outlaws Nazi speech because on some level, Germans don't trust themselves. A society that bans speech is a society that is so terrified that it can be seduced by evil, that it tries to hide itself away in a bubble and pretend that bad things, bad ideas, and bad people don't even exist. Only the timid and the fearful demand that the government, people with guns, prevent bad ideas from being spoken aloud. And history is littered with the regrets of people who have had that wish fulfilled. Here in America, most of us are so confident in our society's ability to resist evil that we're not afraid to hear it spoken aloud. And we are right. The reason we can be unafraid is because the exposure to offensive ideas, and more importantly, the ability of other people to refute those ideas, inoculates us. It makes us stronger and more resistant. So we're going to test that theory here today with a couple of people who are associated with the University of Nevada in Reno. And we're going to start with this guy. This is former university student Peter Svetanovich, who is marching with the white nationalists in Charlottesville. So let's share his ideas today that skin color matters, that white people need to march through the streets waving torches to stick up for their race. This audience is America. Is there anybody here who's proud of this guy's bigotry? Is there anybody here who's suddenly been converted to this repugnant point of view simply by having been exposed to it? Is anybody that weak-willed? Has this caused anybody to lose control of themselves? I don't see any cars driving through the crowd, so that's good. No rioting, no chairs are on fire. Now, later interviews with this young man show him to be what he is, pitiable and foolish. He's only scary in the dark of night when we can't see who and what he actually is. And his ideas, like all disgusting things, only grow and thrive in dark, dank, and hidden away places. There was an online petition to actually get him expelled from school or to get him fired from his job at the university. But ladies and gentlemen, we want to see him in the light of day. We want to hear his ideas put up against better ones because sunlight is the best disinfectant. Seeing it, exposing it, examining it, laughing at it, that's how you make ideas like this lose power. And that's how an idea like that could take control of the government and populace of a country like Germany that was afraid. But it can never happen here as long as we remain proud and confident of our freedoms. So then we have this guy, professional football player Colin Kaepernick, who's a 2010 graduate of the University of Nevada. Now, kneeling as he's doing in this picture 
for the national anthem is deeply offensive to a lot of people, and I'm one of them. I'm a veteran of three military deployments. It's obviously not anywhere near as disgusting as a white supremacist shouting Nazi slogans, but there are people out there who think this needs to be shut down, that this represents some kind of threat to the republic. We see this debate come up periodically when politicians, mostly those on the right, vote for constitutional amendments which would ban flag burning. But I think it's a great opportunity to try this experiment again. So, who in this audience has now been inspired by Mr. Kaepernick to renounce their patriotism or to commit treason against the United States of America? Is there anybody down for a little armed overthrow of our government and its institutions? And for those of us who are offended, there's still no rioting. I don't see any chairs on fire. Now, I think Mr. Kaepernick is foolish for this. This is a guy that didn't even bother to vote in the last presidential election. Nonetheless, he's risen to the top of American society and made millions of dollars based on his talent and hard work. He's clearly ignorant of the tens of millions of people worldwide that American power, both hard and soft, has liberated from the murder of Nazism and the slavery of international communism. And I think he's also ignorant of the good work tens of thousands of community police officers do every single day in this country. This, ladies and gentlemen, is self-aggrandizing nonsense. He's not risking anything. The only thing he did was make himself marginally more relevant on the back end of a short football career. But the thing that I think is worst of all is that the way he went about this protest invited such a pushback that actually makes it harder to address truly legitimate concerns that his protest might otherwise represent. But banning him, hiding him away, punishing him, making him a martyr? Our country is so strong that it can withstand criticism, both legitimate and illegitimate. Our country isn't a song or a piece of cloth. It's an idea. And it's the idea that freedom self-perpetuates. It's the idea that we don't give a politician that we like the power to shut down the wrong ideas, because that means someday a politician will come along that we don't like, and he'll have that same power. And so with that in mind, let's do one more experiment. Who here today is willing to give President Trump the power to A, decide what speech is okay, and B, the power to decide, or the power to punish speech he doesn't think is okay? Me either. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.